Hi, Caroline here from Wisdom Tree Kids. Um, I hope this finds you well and healthy on this Good Friday. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a few things today. I think I mentioned yesterday that uh, I'll go over what NLP is and um, how it can help people. But first, a message from our sponsor, which would be me. <laughs> Next Tuesday, I'm very excited. I am having an online class for children uh, ages 8 through 11, and it's a four session workshop. And it's, it's online on Zoom. Uh, each day, let's see, starting on Tuesday, and then we have one on Thursday, um, and then Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday, I think the 14th, Thursday the 16th, and then I think it's Tuesday the 21st, and then the 23rd, I believe. I don't have my notes in front of me, sorry. <laughs> um, the first class uh, is on overcoming fear. And yesterday, I had an opportunity to share with you an adult version of overcoming fear. And the story for the kids is called Slaying Dragons. It's quite compelling. Um, and then the second session is Choosing Self-Talk. And the story is Choosing Our BFF, Best Friend Forever. The third session is on Self-Responsibility, How to Be the Boss of Me. And so kids get to learn how they can choose to be their own boss. Now, how cool is that? Every child wants to be their own boss. So the story is Victim Victor Finds His Power. And the fourth session is The Power of Possibility, Why You Achieve What You Believe. And the story has the same name, The Power of Possibility. It's really cool. And that starts next week. And you can be anywhere in the world taking these classes. Of course, if you're in a different time zone, you'll have to make concessions if it's going to be early in the morning for you. <laughs> Hopefully not midnight, unless you're living maybe in Dubai. <laughs> but um, so these classes are offered for children between the ages of 8 and 11. And they're wonderful lessons. And the stories are really good. And then if we can manage some sort of activity, even at home, we'll try to do that. But I'm excited to offer that. You can go to my website, www.wisdomtreekids.com, and go to workshops. Actually, no, it's not under workshop. It says book online, and then look for workshops once you get to that page. And I also have it here on my Facebook page, uh, a link that takes you directly there. So you don't have to look for it. So, um, so I had a question the other day. Uh, you know, why would I need a life coach for my, for my child? And good question. I love that question. So sometimes children can hear the same thing twice. And the first time it might not seem important and it might be coming from a loved one. But then they hear it again from someone else not related to them. And all of a sudden it's like a learning moment. Oh, and then they might go home and tell you. And you're going to say, I've been telling you that. They weren't listening. <laughs> they didn't get it. So life coaching is kind of a way to uh, teach some really valuable lessons and skills, and you can reinforce it at home. And so when your child is enrolled in a workshop session or a workshop series, um, the child will um, get workbooks and kind of a remembrance sheet, and you can have a further discussion throughout the week about the topic. And then they're challenged to actually put it into motion, whatever the lesson was about. 
So you will see definite changes in your child, especially, um, so some children uh, might have some, let's see, integrity issues. And, you know, the words that you tell them, uh, they're just partially listening to. <laughs> but they are listening. It's just that because you might have said them, that they don't take it to heart. And then when they hear the same exact words from someone else, it's all of a sudden a light bulb goes off and it reaffirms what you've been teaching all along. And that's why I think it works so well. And I've seen some transformation in children right before my eyes, like I've said. And um, I don't all, always work with children. I, always, I work with adults as well. And um, teens, especially teens. Um, and so, yeah, it works out really well. And the other thing I wanted to talk about that I mentioned yesterday is I am an NLP practitioner. Um, what is that? Well, the N stands for neuro, the L stands for linguistic, and the P stands for programming. So what the heck is that, right? And why do you care? Why should anybody care, right? <laughs> Well, neuro refers to the nervous system, the mind, uh, through which our experience is processed through the five senses. And the five senses, of course, are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, smell, and gustatory, which is taste. Linguistic refers to the language and other nonverbal communication systems through which our neural network representations are coded, ordered, and given meaning through pictures, sounds, feelings, tastes, smells, words, right? Your self-talk is just as important. Actually, your self-talk is more important because who's listening? You are. Um, it describes how we organize and store our experiences. So that's linguistic. Programming refers to the ability to discover and utilize the programs that we run, our communication to ourselves and others, in our neurological systems to achieve our specific and desired outcome. I know that's a mouthful. But basically, it is a wonderful modality. And the basic premises is that we model excellence. And so when, we, when I start an NLP session, it always starts with the most important question. What do you want? What do you want? A lot of people have to think about that. What do I want? Because the self-talk kicks in and says, well, I really want, um, you know, I want to be the best parent I can be for my child. Let's just choose that one. And um, so the second thing is, well, how would you feel once you have attained that? And so based on that answer, sometimes it goes back, well, well, I, I don't think I'll ever be. And so there might be some doubt. And so we can kind of dig a little bit deeper. I don't need to know any of the gory details. <laughs> we're talking surface level here, but we're going deep. To find out why. And sometimes I may ask, uh, how did you come to the decision that you weren't a good parent? And so we have further conversations. So we kind of, we're getting to the root. And so based on the answers, I can do a couple of techniques and it's pretty rapid. And things can get solved pretty quickly. I'm also a practitioner of timeline therapy. And what that is, it is the most wonderful process of letting go of negative emotions and limiting beliefs. And you say, well, how is that done? Well, everyone has a timeline. And the person who is, um, having an issue perhaps 
we can go back in their timeline and determine what the root cause of it was. And then it's let go. It's quite amazing and it's quite magical. And my first timeline therapy um, was quite amazing, actually. Um, I didn't realize it, but well, there's a certain um, uh, there is a way. Let me see if I can find my, my notes here. Sorry about that. Um, so letting go of negative thoughts and emotions. So there's certain negative emotions that you handle first, and anger is one of them. And then comes sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt. And it should be in that order. So my first one was anger. And I was a little bit skeptical, actually. But I went through it. And uh, during it, I was still a little bit skeptical. But then it was released. And afterwards, and this is like a 20-minute situation here. And afterwards, I could not find it. I couldn't bring up that anger if I tried. Sorry, my phone is doing weird things. I could not um, bring up that emotion, that negative emotion. And um, it works. And I've, and I've done it countless of times with people, and they can't find those negative emotions. It's completely gone. Now, you'll... It's not like you forget what happened that surrounded that a negative emotion or caused that negative emotion. You'll always remember the occasion or the event, um, but you won't have the negative emotion attached to it. So it's, it's, it's a bit more comfortable to deal with. You have the memory of it. So that's timeline therapy. It's very powerful. It's almost magical. I, you know, every time it happens right before my eyes, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm an NLP practitioner, and I'm also a, a timeline therapy practitioner. Those are the couple of things. How does this relate to children? It can be used with children, um, especially for anxiety. Timeline therapy is wonderful for anxiety. So that's, that's uh, part of my practice. So I do life coaching for children, and I'm also an LP practitioner and time therapy practitioner. And I'm hoping to add more things. So I don't know why my phone is being weird, but it keeps beeping at me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, so I, that's what I promised yesterday that I would um, explain to you what those things were. and. I just wanted to share with you, I want to publicly say how grateful I am. We are heading into a really um, beautiful season. We have Easter on Sunday, Good Friday today. And um, my daughter and I were out and about this afternoon. Yes, still social distancing, but we were out and we were sitting in our car and we noticed um, that the buds on the trees were starting to sprout leaves. And there were uh, little uh, buds of flowers and things like that. And so it was just, um, we started to see spring arriving and uh, birds were fluttering everywhere. Not just any birds. We had cardinals come across where we were sitting, blue jays and um robins and it it all happened in a matter of minutes and it just reminded me that although we're in a situation right now where we're at home we're not um socializing like we normally do there's still beauty all around us and i just want to publicly say how grateful i am for that and for the freedoms that we have in this country 
to do the things that we want to do and to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. But moreover, I am very grateful for the nurses, the doctors, the administrative staff, all the hospitals and the hard work that they're putting in every single day to make sure that people, humans are taken care of um, in their care. And I couldn't be more grateful for, for that. I wanted to publicly say that. And also to wish everyone a happy Easter. Okay, I'm gonna keep this short today because um, I got things to do. And today I was a little bit late getting on because I have initiated, like I said, I'm really um, getting out of my comfort zone. And um, while I'm doing these live videos or Facebook Live, I initiated something yesterday and it was based on a question and it has propelled itself to actually come to fruition. So next week, I may not be doing Facebook Lives. We'll see, let's see how much time I have. Um, but this idea that I had uh, came to me not too long ago, and it was further uh, supported by other coaches. So I am one coach, life coach, that uses the Adventures and Wisdom curriculum out of, I think, 140, maybe 145 coaches all over the world. And they are, you know, in the UK and Ireland, um, I think East Africa, South Africa, Canada. Um, let's see what other, oh, Australia for sure. And I think Dubai and definitely India. So we're spread out all over the world and all over the country in the US. And so um, I had a thought, how can we as coaches, life coaches for children, how can we, with all of our tools, our um, life experiences, our professional experiences, our backgrounds, we come from all kinds of backgrounds, how can we serve the teens of the world? How can we help them uh, through this discussion? difficult time, not only children, but teens. Our program is mostly geared towards the younger um, children. So I was just brainstorming in my own head, how can we bring this to teens? And I just proposed the question and I got an overwhelming response of, this is a fantastic idea. We should do something. We should maybe have a summit. So yesterday had about an two hour meeting with coaches from all over the world. It was quite exciting. And everyone wants to be a part of something, and we're not charging, of helping teens, you know, get through this. Because teens, especially the older ones, the juniors and seniors, uh, may not have prom this year. They don't, they may not have graduation. There's a lot of things that are they're going to be missing if the quarantine period you know goes on so we are putting our heads together and these coaches are amazing just amazing and i thought i was kind of crazy because i'm involved with so many things and i do so many things but i am in the same company <laughs> we are very much alike and we're all very driven, even though none of us has um, experience in putting together a uh, online webinar, summit, whatever you call it, none of us do. But we all have the passion to do it. Our passion is outweighing any worry about how it's going to happen. None of us seem to be worried about how this is going to happen. So we're going to take it one step at a time and create it as we go. And it's going to be a journey. And I'm really looking forward to working with so many talented people from all over the world. And the idea is, and 
and a lot of the coaches have recommended that we should offer it to teens no matter where they are on the planet. I think I mentioned earlier is 1.5, it's probably over 1.5 billion um, students <clears throat> that are currently at home, schooling at home. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> had a little tickle and my phone is just going crazy and I don't know why. Sorry about that. <clears throat> So one thing I wanted to talk about is <clears throat> how do you break the worry cycle? How a lot of people are worrying right now, and for good reason. Um, you know, how's the economy going to fare after this? Um, are people going to be able to go back to work? Has work life changed? Everybody's working from home that used to work in offices, right? And we're finding out that this is possible. You don't have to go into the office to, um, to get your work done. So consequently, there's um, a lot of changes in the environment, actually. I think California, Southern California, has been the clearest it's ever been. And there's other parts of the world where um, the animal life is flourishing once again because no one's on the streets and no one's, you know, the hustle and bustle of city life isn't there right now. So, you know, there's a lot of things changing in the world because people are working at home. So what does that mean? You know, the will the work continue to be done at home? Do we have to go in the office? Um, you know, these are all really good questions or will i have a job to go back to what if the company pulls back um they've got all kinds of government programs to help small businesses um weather this storm and you know i hope you know everyone makes it through okay financially and um professionally and that's a concern for for everyone how is it going to look like afterwards so I'm sure there's a lot of worry from people out there. And it may be a time right now to reinvent yourself. Take some online classes, start building up your resume, make yourself more valuable um, while you're spending quality time with your children. Um, your children are probably having a hard time too. Or they may have already gotten into a routine and they're perfectly fine now. But just in case. Sorry, I have a tickle. <coughs> Sorry. And my phone is just going crazy. <coughs> okay, so here's eight tips for breaking the worry cycle. So we know that our minds are incredibly powerful, right? Um, our minds have the ability to help us create amazing things, but they also have the ability to torture us. Now, our mind can be our friend or it can be our enemy. It's up to us. <coughs> Pardon me. I have a tickle. Um, <clears throat> so the perfect example of torture is worry. And we've all experienced worry. And it's a natural human phenomenon. And worry happens when you have thoughts or emotions about a potential threat or problem that's out in the future. And when you imagine something going wrong or something bad happening. Right, and that causes anxiety as well. It's something we're worried about something that hasn't even happened yet. So we can't control what's in the future, but we can only control what's in the now. And this is what mindfulness is all about in meditation. We are in the moment. How we control ourselves and our thoughts and emotions right this moment. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow, not next week, 
how do we operate right now? And we have a lot of choices. <clears throat> so this can serve a purpose if you use it to help you identify issues that you can get prepared for. However, it can be detrimental and an energy drain. Worry is a thief. It robs you from enjoying the present moment. And you're thinking, well, how can I enjoy the present moment when I'm worried about tomorrow, right? So that's something for you to work out. That's a good question. How do I stop worrying? Well, when you understand that you have a lot of things that you are in your control, and then there's a lot of things that are not in your control. And if you can let those go and worry about your present moment and center yourself, it can really help. <clears throat> and the key to alleviating the worry cycle is to shift worry from anxiety and rumination to concern and preparation. That's a huge difference. So if you do have a concern, how can you prepare yourself? Right? So I'm thankful that many, many years ago, um, <clears throat> We decided as a family to do some prep work in our home. So we have um, <clears throat> some food storage and not enough toilet paper. We didn't do that. But if you're prepared for anything, then you really don't have anything to fear for, right? Or actually when something bad happens, um, the things that you have to worry about is much less. <clears throat> in this case, for us, it was just toilet paper. Everything else we had in the house. Sorry. This happens when I talk a lot. And I've been talking an awful lot today. <laughs> That's why I was late. Sorry. Okay. Um, so. Here are some eight tips. The first step is to acknowledge your worries and give them time. And the more you try to resist something, the more it will persist. And it's not, it's like trying not to imagine a green monkey wearing a big orange cowboy hat sitting on a purple giraffe in the middle of your kitchen. You just can't help it. I used to have a friend that said to me all the time, it drove me crazy. Well, I didn't want you to think, but what did I do? I did think what she didn't want me to think. <laughs> it's just human nature. It drive me crazy. Um, the best way to stop rumination is to write it down and then go to step two. So here is step two. Put boundaries around your worries. Set aside a specific time to focus on your worries. And that's it. And during this time, write down everything you worried about. And, um, or if something comes up later in the day, just add it to the list and tell yourself, this is your self-talk, <clears throat> you can think about it tomorrow during your allotted time. Is that genius? I love it. The process of writing the worry down lets your mind rest because it knows you've got it on the agenda. Third, change your language. Language is a very powerful tool. It creates your experience. Instead of using the word worried, which automatically triggers a feeling of anxiety in some people, use the word concerned, followed by the word prepared. For example, instead of saying, oh, I'm worried about the economy, I'm losing my job, you could say, I'm concerned about the economy and losing my job. To get prepared, I'm going to examine my budget and add to my emergency saving funds, and I might also consider a part-time job or reinventing myself. 
taking more classes, getting certified in something, right? Or maybe this is the time to think about what you really want to do. I remember being in corporate America and there were days and I and we lived in Northern California and I, I worked in Mountain View <clears throat> at the time. It's a beauty, beautiful city and I love my job. But boy, on the way there, I saw the sign San Francisco or Mountain View. And I have to tell you, some days I would go, I just want to go to San Francisco for the day. I don't want to go to work. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you think, well, that's just, you know, that particular day. But then there are other days you go, what would I really like to do? But sometimes you are tied to a job because we need the paycheck, because we have the bills, because we have a home and we have responsibilities. So it is our responsibility as an adult to go to work. Sometimes it ends up not being what you're really called to do. And when I say called, I mean, and I don't want to use passion because that word is just being tossed around so much. Passion is cultivated, by the way. Um, what do you really want to do? And have you had time in your life to figure out what that is? And are you in a position to move on it? Can you do it? How can you get prepared for it? So, um, I, since I'm talking to parents, um, this is something you can teach your children as well. Just because something didn't work out that you had planned on doing, doesn't mean that you can't pivot and look at it in a different way and seeing how you can adjust your goal or adjust your situation to where it's something that you really want to do. And you can be so much happier at that point, you know, in your life. Things will go a lot smoother in your life if you're doing something that you believe in, something that you, you're you excited to get out of bed every morning to go pursue. And that challenges you a little bit in a good way, not in a stressful way. Um, and something that you can be creative in. Because if you have a job that doesn't allow you to be creative, um, some people like that. They just want to be told what to do and do their job and go home. Is that a fulfilling life? Maybe to them, but to some people it's not. Everyone likes to be creative and work in a job where they feel valued. And sometimes that means stepping out of your comfort zone and starting your own company or starting your own business and see how that goes. And that I talked about fear yesterday, how it can really stop you from doing what you really want to do and examining that fear, like examining worry, right? <clears throat> Okay, I just got off track, sorry. My phone, I wanna throw it out the window. Okay, um, fourth, shift your worry into action. Don't lie around and worry about stuff. Tell your mind what you're gonna do about the situation. So here's the thing, if you are really the boss of you, you can tell yourself what to do. You can give yourself a command and then you do it. You just do it. You give yourself a command and you do it. So for each concern that you have, you can map out a plan. Definitely put it in writing so that each time that particular concern comes up, you can ease your mind by reviewing your plan. I'm not trying to oversimplify this. But in a way, it's kind of simple. So you can spin your wheels and waste your time about worrying about something and never take action or be proactive about it, or you can prepare yourself. So 
sometimes I can be a tough mamma jamma. I, I, I'm not apologetic about that at all because that's what coaches do. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. And I also tell children, there are sometimes things that I say that might cause you to think. And that's the whole purpose of coaching is to offer a dialogue that is thought provoking. And sometimes that can prick yourself in the heart. Like, ooh, that was a toughie. I needed to hear that, but boy, that was tough. But <clears throat> um, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, okay, so when that concern comes up, you can ease your mind at that point because you're going to be reviewing your plan. All right, five, focus on what you want and not what you don't want. Your mind is very powerful and your thoughts trigger both your conscious mind and your subconscious mind to create whatever you focus on. Thoughts become things. So whatever you're focused on, whatever you're, wherever you're pointing your face and your mind, just remember they turn into things. And sometimes those things aren't what you want. So then you need to go back in and figure out <laughs> what were you thinking? That's why that frame, that, um, that saying came, comes around. What were you thinking, right? Because thoughts become things. So focus on what you don't. So focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Your thoughts trigger both your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, like I said, to create whatever you focus on. Each time you worry, it strengthens, we talked about neural pathways yesterday, it strengthens the neural pathways in your brain about that problem. To reprogram your brain, focus on what you do want in the positive, not what you don't want. And this will retrain your brain to help you create what you want. So visualize, visualization and affirmations are powerful tools to help you do this. Six, focus on what's working in your life and not what's not working in your life. Shifting worry thoughts to thoughts of gratitude. Ooh, this is gratitude is the most powerful. It is the magic of life is gratitude. So thoughts of gratitude can help ease your mind and create positive energy throughout the body, throughout your body. And this is so important. If you're wallowing in negativity, people around you can feel it up to, so this um, six foot distance that we're supposed to be from each other right now, well, guess what? Your negative energy can reach those people around you. They can feel it. Did you know that uh, multiple research studies have shown that practicing gratitude actually creates happiness? Positive energy and positive thoughts are essential for creating what you want in your life. Sounds so simple. You know why? Because it kind of is. <laughs> you mean I just have to think positive? Yeah, you do. Start wallowing in your negativity and start thinking differently. Okay, so sorry. My phone is not being cooperative and I'm using it right now for my hotspot because we had difficulties with Wi-Fi. So I apologize for all the noise making. Oh, maybe I can just stick it in my drawer. Here we go. Maybe it won't be so loud in there. Sorry. Okay, so seven, look at what you can control versus what you can't control. If the thing that you're worried about is something that you can control, such as building up your savings account and take action on that. Um, however, if it's something that you have no control over, it's not working. Um, such as when someone dies, then worrying about it only creates negative energy that does not serve you. So the key is recognize those negative emotions, negative feelings, negative thoughts, things that don't serve you, re-examine them, and then not do it. I mean, choose a better way. Everyone has a choice. We're here. We have free will. <clears throat> you have the power. 
to choose a better way of thinking. Everyone does. And you have infinite potential, by the way, infinite. And you are one. Let's see, scientists have discovered that for each individual, one of us, to be here uh, with our DNA and our genetic makeup, um, the look, you know, the way that we look, the way that we act, everything about us, it's like one in 400 trillion chance. That's a lot. So that means that your great, 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 great grandparents had to meet. And then all the subsequent events from that point leading up to you. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. Okay, I always get off track, sorry. However, if it is something that, let's see, where am I? Uh, if you don't have any control over, oh, we already did that, sorry. Um, <clears throat> depending on your spiritual beliefs, you may want to create a practice where you turn over your worries to that which is greater than you. Only you know how, how to do that. So if you believe in God, you believe in source, you believe in eternal energy, whatever your beliefs are, turn your worries over to them to that source, right? Because there's some things that is too much for a person to bear. And sometimes handing it over allows you to see things in a different light, that you're not burdened with it. Other people put, write it down and put it in a box and just put it away, just stick it in your closet. That was the worry. Some people put it on a piece of paper and burn it. I don't know how well that works, but that's, some people do that. <clears throat> Here's the last one. Eight, adopt a practice that can help you relax. Many people find that meditation, exercise, definitely journaling. There is something about writing, the practice of writing causes your... Um, thinking to slow down, you have more time to reflect, to ponder, especially at the end of the day or first thing in the morning. So I'm also going to suggest to adopt the 20-20-20 rule or getting up earlier each day. So if you're normally getting up at six to start your day and go about your whatever you do, Try getting up an hour earlier, spend, spending 20 minutes on yourself with journaling, reading, reading something uplifting, um, having time to think, 20 minutes on doing something physical, like a little bit of exercise. Um, I've just started learning about Kijong. I love it. Um, you know, and the other, 20 minutes doing something that you love and or meditating or just visualizing so there's an hour that you're working on yourself you're investing in yourself you will be so much more pleasant the rest of the day if you do this i promise you it works it absolutely works <clears throat> So lots of people find that meditation, exercise, or journaling, just like I said, helps ease their mind. And a daily practice of relaxation can help neutralize the impact of worrying. So when you're doing the workout front, meaning first thing in the morning, it really helps your day go smoother. And you can start to put things in perspective. And your family will start seeing, oh, she's in good mood. He's in a good mood. <laughs> and we have the power to choose as soon as we open up our eyes in the morning how we're going to experience that day. We do. 
So if you wake up and you're a little, you know, how can you change that? The first thing is to notice it and don't run with it if it's in a negative or has a negative uh, emotion or feeling. Change it. No, no, we're not doing that today. We're going to be in a good mood no matter what. We're going to show up in this world in a more positive manner. And I'm going to, if anything, make people around me happy. <clears throat> Neil Donald Walsh has a quote. I Gosh, I hope I don't mess this up. Your life isn't about you. It's about all the lives that you come in contact. Oh, boy, I messed that up. I will find it and I'll say it correctly or I'll post it. But it's really good. It's it's saying, you know, it's not all about you every day. It's how you interact with other people. And we talk about this in one of the lessons about respect for children. They have the choice to leave gold hearts with people or black marks. It's all up to them. And respect is, there's, it's twofold. Respect for others and things and property. And then also having respect for themselves. Are they leaving gold hearts or black marks? It's their choice. That's a really good lesson, by the way. <clears throat> okay. Finally. Remember that worry and rumination doesn't serve you. It steals the beauty of the present moment and can rob you of your happiness. And learning to focus on what you can do versus things outside of your control can lead to a feeling of personal power. And that's what we all want <clears throat> versus feeling like a victim of the future. And worry is a phenomenon that our kids will also experience. And you can tell when they're worried. And that's when you can sit next to them and say, you got a lot on your mind, don't you? <laughs> Maybe they'll talk to you. Maybe they won't. Maybe they don't know how to put it into words. They just know that they're having this feeling. They don't know how to describe it. And that can be really frustrating. And when that happens, sometimes there's a little bit of acting out. They don't know why they're acting this way. They just know that they've got a feeling, not sure how to process it, and they don't know how to tell you how this feeling is going. So that's why coaching with stories helps them understand that whatever they're feeling or have felt in the past is something real. They're not the only ones that have ever felt that way. And in a story form, it's an example of someone else having the same feeling or issue. And so that takes the onus off of them, but they can relate to it, which is really cool. <clears throat> One of the greatest gifts you can give to your children is to teach them how to turn worry into action. So <clears throat> your journey of personal development mm -hmm. is going to rub off on them. And that's why I'm taking the time now to talk to parents. You can talk to me. I, can, I don't not only talk to children, but I talk to parents and adults. I'm just scratching the surface with you and just giving you an idea of how some of our conversations might begin. I go a lot deeper, but just so that you can get an idea. Um, I want to bring to your attention another really good book. <clears throat> Dr. Caroline Leaf, Think, Learn, Succeed. And with it, you can get a workbook that goes with it. The first chapter is Thinking and Learning to Succeed. 
lot of people don't know what mindsets are. So I love how she puts it. A mindset is an attitude or a cluster of thoughts with attached information and emotions that generate a particular perception. They shape how you see and interact with the world. So they can catapult you forward, allow you to achieve your dreams. Everybody has dreams. And don't tell me that you don't. Okay? I, I don't want to hear that. Or put you in reverse drive if you're not careful. A mindset, therefore, is a significant mental resource and source of power. All we ever need is between our ears, really. If we use our, our minds wisely and not put it into a trance state by numbing it in front of media, TV shows, whatever, you know, for entertainment or relax. I, there's a time for that. Sometimes you just need to not think. Um, but I'm saying don't habitually do it just because. Um, you want to you want to exercise your brain as much as possible, and lots of times we don't think before we do. We let our programs do our thinking for us, meaning our subconscious mind. And boy, have I got a lot to say about that. <laughs> So if you are interested in talking more about that and changing your life, changing the way you think, like I said before, thoughts become things. And there's another saying, I think it's knowledge is power. It's only half of the sentence. Knowledge is power if you know how to use that knowledge or you put that knowledge into action, right? There's a difference. And information that we get pummeled with every day does not make us wiser. And that's what we're striving for, is if we get information and it resonates with us, how do we use it in our lives to make it better? To make our lives better? That's a, that's a question for you. And then I'm going to part with this parting question so you can think about this. What do you want? Pretty simple. What do you want? And then throw away all of those negative thoughts. And Well, I can't do that because of this, or I can't do that because, you know, someone might think I was crazy for having that idea, or this comes the worry. <laughs> but be honest with, your, with yourself. What do you want? Because the more fulfilled parent you are, personally, the better your parenting becomes. And these are little humans that are depending upon you. For guidance, one, inspiration. Yes, inspiration. Like I said before, they are watching you. They can see you. and. Sometimes your actions are much louder than your words. So be sure to show them the way in the best way that you can and be an example to them. Okay? All right, that's it. Boy, I went over. I didn't mean to. And I wish you a wonderful Easter weekend. I'm getting come more cut. I wasn't as nervous today. Wow. Watch out. I might get really used to this. I, there's no what, no telling what I'm going to do next. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful weekend. I wish you health, wealth, and joy in your life. All right? Embrace it. Embrace life. All right? Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.